Rub up your engines! People are always asking me about CVT transmissions. Are they any good? Do they last? Well, this is a six-year-old Honda Civic with a CVT. I'm going to change the fluid today. We're going to analyze the whole thing to see what shape it is on my computer, how it drives once we change it. Now, it's very important that you change the fluid in these things regularly because when you do change the fluid, only a small portion of all the fluid in the transmission comes out. Now, a lot of guys are going to try to sell you a flush job. Do not flush them. If you flush out a transmission, there's all kinds of nooks and crannies and little holes, and if there's any dirt, you can ram it into there. I've seen them get flushed. They don't even move after they're flushed. You just want to drain what you can and fill. And above all, don't listen to the idiots at the dealership that say, oh, it's a lifetime fluid. You never need to change it. That's bunk. I asked them one time, I said, how dare you say that? They said, well, it's a lifetime fluid. It's good for the lifetime of the transmission. Then I said, what's the lifetime of the transmission? And they said, well, we guarantee it for 60,000 miles. <laughs> I hope it lasts longer than that, right? So they're just saying, oh, don't change the fluid. When the transmission breaks, just get another transmission. Stupid advice. All fluid gets dirty over time. We'll get more friction. We'll wear things out. So you do want to change it. In the case of these, I advise every maybe 35, 40,000 miles, change it. They're not crap like the ones that Nissan makes, the Jadco ones. Honda makes one of the best two, Honda and Toyota, one and two with CVT transmissions. So they're good transmissions, but you want to take care of them. Now, when you see how easy it is to change the fluid in this thing today, you'll gladly do it yourself. And take my advice, do it yourself. I have seen people who paid mechanics to do it. They screwed up. They either put in too much fluid or not enough, and it destroyed these transmissions, cost thousands and thousands to replace or repair. Just open the hood. the transmission side there's the front of the engine there's the transmission here now we're gonna jack this side up jack it up here on the jack point there and stick a jack stand on there of course they've gone bananas with modern cars so we gotta take these stupid splash pans off Throw our drain pan in you notice this should fit right on rather than kill myself pull on the stupid thing I just use a large hammer. <laughs> you heard it pop? That means it's loose. You can use your finger to get it off now. It's simple. And what you want to do is have it in an empty drain plan and let it go. It might take five minutes. They have little magnets on these. As you can see, there's a tiny, tiny amount of metal filing. See them standing up here? And that's black. Don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally normal on one of these. This one's never been touched. It's never been changed. This is the original factory stuff and that little bit of metal filings. That's normal. Now, if they're big, tall, giant, gloppy ones, yeah. This just goes to show why you gotta change the fluid and not say it's lifetime fluid. Cause there's pieces in there and you wanna get them out. It's just absurd that these clowns say you never have to change them. You can see there are metal filings on there. You definitely wanna change it. Now, we're measuring what comes out, and we'll put the same exact back in, because I could show you on my phone my all data system, but there is a gigantic step-by-step -step process to correctly check the fluid. This isn't like the old ones that you put the dipstick in. It doesn't work that way. This thing is new enough. It's never been changed. The transmission itself is bone dry. There's nothing leaking on the outside. So we know it's full of fluid. We'll measure what comes out, put that same amount back in. It's that simple. Now, let's say you have one that's older and it's all wet, the fluid had been leaking, you screwed then. You're gonna have to pay a guy like me with our fancy computers and our data systems to change it out and then fill it up and it'll take hours and you can pay a whole bunch of money. That's why you wanna change it every 35, 40,000 miles to keep it clean so it doesn't leak anything out so you don't have to deal with any of that crap. Now we gotta put the fluid back in. You look up here, you'll see up there, sockets on it. Buddy, you get off of the other one. That's the hole where we're gonna pump the fluid back in. You can see the funnel fits down in there. From the top down, we won't have to get a pump and pump the stupid thing. First, we're gonna pour one quart in. Then we're gonna use this to measure what's in there so we'll know exactly how much to put in. Don't trust any of the books. Many of them lie. Oh, we'll pour one quart in. And make sure you do what he did. I told him to bring it. Honda Genuine, bought it at the dealer. 
Do not mix fluids. The particulate is very particular, especially Honda. Now that we got one quart in, we got an empty one, so there's the old dirty fluid, and you can see. Look at it. It's dirty. You saw how clear the other one was. It's pretty dirty. Keep pouring until this one's full. You can look in the top and see when it gets close. You can also look in the side. All right, it's up to the top here. Now this one's full, so that's one, and we put one in. Now normally, I pour the old oil in my old oil gasoline can that said old oil. But my son stole it for his boat. So I'm using this naked way gallon. <laughs> To put the old oil, take it to the recycling center. There's number two, we'll throw that in. Pour all the rest in this, cause it won't take it off. Now I'm having a hard time reading it, so here's a trick. Get a flashlight and shine it in the top. Then you can read the side better. And in this case, it stops right at 28 ounces. It's just about three whole quarts. See the nonsense about it being a lifetime flood? Look, look how dirty that stuff is. It's dirty. It's really dirty. And it's only 50,000 miles of driving, believe me. You're better off changing it every 35, 40,000 miles. Buy the fluid at the dealer. Learn how to do it yourself like this, then you don't have to worry about somebody screwing it up, putting in cheaper fluid. You'll do it right. Now since we don't want to forget, we'll put the 28 ounces in first. <laughs> and as you can see, Look how much cleaner that stuff is. That's it for that one. We'll have a little tiny bit left. And we'll put the last quart in and that'll be exactly what came out is going in. So here goes the last quart. And we'll crawl under and put the bolt and the washer back on. First you get it on finger tight. Then put a socket on it. You get it snug and then just a little bit more so it won't leak. Put the stupid pan back on. <laughs> I hate these things. <laughs> Now we're going to take it for a road test, but first we're going to let it down and put my fancy scanner on it just to see what kind of shape the transmission and car is in. In this case it's a cinch, it's just right there. Plug it in the left kick panel. On goes the scanner and we'll start her up. Turn on the AC too, it's getting really hot out here. And we'll get some stuff going here. Collagen diagnosis. A lot faster with a more modern car like this. It knows what it is. We'll do diagnosis, and we'll do a smart scan. It's going to go through everything on the car. See, look at all the stuff on the screen this baby's going through. It is going through a ton of stuff. There's no way a human being could do that without spending days or weeks or months. Modern vehicles, got to have modern equipment to diagnose them. There's no way out of it. Which is a big reason if you buy one of these used like this guy did, to have a guy like me check it out. Not just some clown with a little scan tool, but a real tool that goes through every system. All of these different systems. All of them. And so far so good. Everything's green. Gray just means it doesn't have that system on. Everything's green, but we want to look at the transmission because we're curious about the CVT transmission. So here we go. Oh, it doesn't have trouble codes, but we'll check it anyways. No trouble codes. So we will go to data stream. Check out the data screen. We'll select all 65 parameters. Now they only trip trouble codes when they go too far off. 20, 25% plus or minus. So it could be bad data that's on its way out but didn't trip a code. So we're going to look at all of them. Blue is good data. These are color coded too. There's all kinds of information on these CVT transmissions. They're very complex. No data flaw. I'm going to take it for a spin and see how it shifts. Here we go back and up. It's got a decent backup camera. Man, these Civics have gone a long way. They are so much more luxurious, smoother riding cars than they used to be years ago. And you can see, now it's not a regular transmission. So it doesn't really shift gears. What we're looking for is if it has too much slippage, where you step on the gas and it doesn't accelerate. Well, that's definitely not the case. And you might wonder, why do they have CVT transmissions? Well, the main thing is because they get phenomenal gas mileage for their size, they weigh less, and they're cheaper to make. In the case of this, He's driving on Highway 65, he gets 40 miles a gallon. So, that's pretty good. Now, originally, I hated these, because you step on the gas, nothing happened, this, it accelerates pretty good. As far as I'm concerned, Honda and Toyota make the best CVT transmissions in the world. They have the least problems, better acceleration, and phenomenal gas mileage. This little Civic is a joy to drive in the curves, but, of course, it's not a drag strip car. Speaking of which, we're coming up to our little drag strip. So we'll stop and we'll see how fast this can take off. All right, here we go. Full speed ahead. Not bad. Now, it acts like it's shifting gears. 
it doesn't really shift gears but you can see it's exceptionally smooth we didn't get jerking herky jerky and let me tell you in this 2017 Civic the CVT transmission was light years ahead of a lot of its competitors like I say the only other ones that I like are Toyota and I happen to like the newer Toyotas even better because they have what are called launch gears they actually launch in an actual gear and once they're out of the first launch gear they go into a CVT configuration so they're combo training this isn't that way but really when you need to pass someone and you step on the gas look it starts getting faster 54 57 60 it's not a dog and it's exceptionally smooth he bought it used it does have 51,000 miles if it would have been changed at 35 or so the fluid wouldn't have been as dirty so that's what I advise doing. You can see, it's so easy to do. Just do it yourself. And I do have to say, look, you step on the gas, it takes off a lot better than the earlier CVTs did. They're coming to the point of perfecting them, at least Honda and Toyota are. As for the Jetco ones, pfft, not impressed, not impressed. Well, we learned that Honda knows how to make CVT transmissions in these Civics. They got power, they get gas mileage, they're smooth as can be. And you've also learned an important lesson. You'll wanna change the fluid, and if you own one of these, they are perhaps the easiest to change of any of the cars. You've seen some of my Toyota videos. They're a pain in the rear end to change. You gotta take crap off, have special tools. Less fluid comes out. These are so easy to do. Do it yourself. The transmission will last longer and you'll thank me. And you'll thank yourself for using your head and not believing the idiots at the dealer that say, I leave it alone, it's lifetime fluid. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.